Welcome to the final part of this measuring cup tutorial and here we're going to take a look at some of the tools that are handy in measuring or an analysis. Uh, for example, since we have designed a measuring cup, it'll be nice to actually know the exact volume of this cup. In order to do so, we just need to do a couple of things. First of all, I have found that value in ML is 473.2 and also this value 3.66 inches equals 2 cups so what I have done is basically if I move 3.66 inches up from the bottom that's where the plane lies to create 2 cup volume first thing is we need to actually extract some surfaces on the inside then create a plane at 3.66 inches above Z and then we'll do a make manifold to give us the actual volume of the cup so let's start by going to modify click on surface extract let's go to duplicate mode combine the selection and then select these surfaces with all the faces selected you can just hit the green check mark to finish and this has given us our inner surface of this cup Let's move into the top view, just draw a plane, go back to the perspective view, hit W on the keyboard, just click on this arrow and type in 3.66. Since this plane and the face surface extract create an enclosed body, we can use Make Manifold tool to complete this. So the Make Manifold can be found under Modify, so select Make Manifold, select this surface extract and the plane and right click and it should give you the desired volume. And all we have to do is measure this volume. So let's go to analysis and click on area volume and I've changed the volume to milliliters and you can see the volume is 473.7 and we wanted 473.2 which means there is a small percentage error here which can be corrected by moving this plane slightly below the z-axis so minus 0 0.0025 and let's measure it again 473.2 so let's keep this inner surface handy for reference I'll just make it not pickable for the time being and let's go to the rendering stage right now in order to place the image on the front of this cup I'll have to extract the surface so either I can do it here in Inspire Studio or I can move into Inspire Render so what I'm gonna do is say file save as and change it to for render so that I know that I'm going to be using this for rendering only so I'll overwrite an existing file and I'll open Inspire Render. So Inspire Render looks very similar except it has only two tabs, Rendering and Animation. Within Rendering there are several handy tools such as Group Extract, Surface Extract Combine and Instance Painter. So let's open the file that we just saved. As you can see most of the objects that are imported will show up without history because there is no history when you open it in render so what we need to do first is to extract this outer surface in order to place that uh, place that image so I'm going to just click on surface extract it's, this is going to extract and combine and I only need this surface so I'll click on this now this is where we're going to place the image so let's turn on interactive rendering before we move on let's just select this entire object the handle open the material library you can reduce the size of the material previews by changing the thumbnail size here for this I'm going to go to molded plastic and just use one of these options you can drag and drop it you can also reduce the size of this texture by going to texture positioning and changing the global size to change the color of this particular plastic you can just double click on it and click on the color image and just choose an appropriate color let's select everything in the view apart from the handle and then apply a plastic transparent texture now you can edit the color by clicking on the full option and changing the absorption color to something around white now since we're using the inner surface it looks a bit awkward because when I turn it off you can see that uh, things start looking much better right like this so let's we're gonna keep that on just to place the image so we're gonna select the surface extract and click on texture positioning 
click the labels tab and then click the plus you just need to use this particular label when I double click the label is added and the default planar map is also added let's change the mapping to cylindrical and also reduce the scale horizontal to a smaller value you can rotate the texture by holding the top or the bottom preview handles here. You can also reduce the height by moving these handles. I'll go into the front view and turn on wireframe mode and just ensure that measurement ends where we have found cup mark to be. The measuring cup image would be placed in the correct location. The last thing I want to do is to also extract the surface on the top and apply a frosted material to it. So let's go to surface extract And for this material, I'm going to go to glass frosted and just drop this frosted glass. And let's turn on the interactive render to see how it looks. We might have to tweak the texture a little bit. So I'll go to texture positioning and reduce the global size to about half. That looks better. So here is the final model setup. And I'm going to quickly walk through what I've done. One is I have created just a regular plane at the bottom which is going to act as a ground and then I have a couple of planes that will act as emitters so if I double click on it you will notice that they are emitters and they are set to a certain wattage. The same thing with the other plane and also the plane on top. So I have all of these set up to cast this particular uh, style and if I change the camera I can show you that I have extracted this face and applied a different texture although it's uh, it's the same texture but with a different color and if I look at the frosted glass it's um, only for the top surface as I showed earlier and I also did a quick render of this one one of the things that I wanted to share was the option to do relights after you finish rendering which means you can turn on all the lights and render the scene and then tweak them individually in the dark room so this is the setup that I've already rendered so let me switch to the dark room so here is the rendered image that you can see I am currently in the image browser tab this R on the image thumbnail will tell you that it's a relight so if I go to relight there are several lights that are available for you to turn on and off and each of them have their own option of intensity and color so I can hit the solo button to make only one of them light up the scene or I can turn only um, turn certain lights off and create a different sort of an effect so if I don't want these two planes to emit any lights I'm going to just turn them off so I'll get a different view and if I want to change the color of a certain light I can just click on this and change the overall look also there are several effects here that you can play with in terms of tone mapping uh, you can add burn gamma sharpness and you can also add some uh, visual effects like glare and vignetting so all of these options are available in darkroom and it's really cool to play around with these and when you're done you can either reset it or save this current setting of all the effects I'm just going to change this light back to white click save here so that I can save all these effects with the image in a future tutorial we'll take a deeper look into darkroom and all the options available thanks for watching